There is no doubt the multiplied paper sack has certainly come to stay in today's business life. The demand for this type of sack is increasing all the time and the paper converting industry is making every effort to keep abreast of this development. This can only be done when the progress is backed up by building machines combining high output with economic production. Here you see a model of one of the machines built in our works. This is the universal tubing machine, type 501, for the production of tubes for sacks of all kinds with sewn closures, as well as sacks with standard and stepped-in pasted bottoms. Believe it or not, but this machine is capable of a daily output of more than 100,000 tubes. However, before going into greater detail, mention should be made of another, smaller tuber, namely our type 510 tubing machine. Es ist die Schlauchziehmaschine 510. This machine is not quite so versatile as the 501, but it has nevertheless earned a good reputation for itself for the manufacture of flat and gusseted tubes for pasted and sewn paper sacks. Up to six paper webs can be handled on this machine, with single or multicolor printing of the outer web carried out in one continuous operation. The outstanding features of this machine are its high output and great simplicity of operation with little maintenance. Should a paper converter intend to add the production of step 10 tubes to his program, he need consider our type 501 or 507 tubers. The model 501 has already been shown to you. In aiming for a record output, all the resources and high standard of present day engineering have been utilized to the full in the design of these machines. Unlike the 510 tubing machine, the printing unit here is located in front of the paper reels. In this way, the printed web travels a greater distance, the ink is allowed to dry, and ink smudging is thereby avoided. If all four printing units are required, it is recommended to allow for the printing units to be observed from below. One of the inking units with the cover taken off. The inking rollers continue running even when the machine is stopped. Change of paper wheels is carried out whilst the machine is running. The parent wheel is swung out when it reaches a diameter of about 12 inches. The fresh wheel is then placed into the now empty bearing. applied. This preparatory work is often carried out before the reels are placed in the machine. The reel need then only be started up at the appropriate moment to enable the pasted edge of the reel to join up with the old paper web. The old web is then torn off by hand. Due to this semi-automatic reel change, the actual net output of tubes is increased by approximately 20%. Each web travels through one draw unit and is then perforated. This is 
can dry it for the perforating knives. A scale is provided for adjusting the speed of the perforating unit to the tube length being handled at the time. The paste is applied after the perforation of the paper web, first across the web, then in length direction. Here is the paste storage container. And here the pasting segments for cross-pasting. The speed of the paste duct roller is variable to ensure absolutely satisfactory application of the adhesive. The paste roller will continue running when the machine comes to a stop. The pumps that carry the paste into the paste ducts. The duct for length pasting. The former plate, guide rods and rollers are now forming the tube. Individual tube lengths are torn off along the perforations by the cut-off units. The timing of the separating action is synchronized with the perforating line and with the cross-pasting by a differential gear and a variable speed motor. In the past, a change of tube length necessitated time-wasting fitting of change gears, but the 501 has done away with all this. Here the tube length is determined by simply setting scales. The completed tubes are now moving towards collating stations where they are stacked in alternate pile deliveries. The number of tubes in each pile can be selected and is determined in accordance with the weight of the tubes. The completed stacks are then ejected automatically. This then is the manufacturing process of tubes or valve sacks with stepped end pasted bottoms. By cutting out the perforating unit and engaging a cutoff aggregate instead, Straight cut tubes as well as satchel tubes for sacks with sewn closures can be produced on this machine. Tubes which have been produced on tubing machines of the 501 and 510 types can be further processed on the single-ended block bottoming machine, favorite 561, if a bottom is to be formed at one end of the tube only. The block bottom is folded. Bottom flaps are folded over and pasted. The cutting strip fed from a paper reel reinforces the finished bottom. If desired, this cutting strip can be printed in single or multicolor in the same operation. Bottoms are to be formed at both ends of the tube, the Progress 525 paper sack bottoming machine will carry out this task in one operation, one bottom of the sack being fitted with a valve closure. The machine employs two feed tables from which the tubes are alternately removed by swinging suction cups. The tubes pass a registering station and then arrive at revolving suckers which open the sack on both sides. Thin segment engages the opening, flattening the triangular pockets. These are pressed down and the paste is applied. Single, or as seen here, tubular valve sleeves are cut off from a paper reel and inserted into one of the pockets. Now the bottom flaps are folded over. The paste causes them to stick permanently and in this way the bottom is formed. The capping strip, which can be printed in one or more colors, reinforces and seals the bottom. Afterwards, the sacks pass through a pressure tape device after having previously arranged themselves into an overlapping formation. The Progress 525 bottomer guarantees a reliable valve closure for every paper sack. A more recent development is the Progress 522 valve type paper sack bottoming machine. This is a much more heavily built machine than the Progress 525 and is therefore capable of manufacturing sacks of the heaviest weight and of the largest sizes. 
Here, a 522 is seen under test. As all machines leaving our works, it is undergoing a thorough trial run in the workshop and the performance of all sections is closely examined and tested. On this machine, the tubes are placed in large stacks onto a movable table. After pressing a pre-selector button, they are fed to the machine, but only after a contact finger has released the feeder at the correct time. This method of rotary feed substantially simplifies previous arrangements for keeping the machine constantly supplied with tubes. As with the Progress 525, the tubes are passing through creasing rollers, thus facilitating the final folding. The folding commences with the ends of the tubes being opened by suction heads and finger-shaped rods when the triangular pockets are actually beginning to form. Rotary speed-controlled lever arms now engage into the pockets so that they are accurately set up in dead centre. The opened and pre-pressed three-cornered pockets are then creased prior to the bottom flap folding and are subsequently placed into horizontal position by a guide rail. The completion of the paper sacks which now follows is much the same as for the 525 type. Each operating unit is driven by differentials and their adjustment is possible regardless of whether the machine is running or stationary. The manufacture of these highly developed and technically complicated machines is based on the ingenuity of their designers. This is the designers and draftsmen's office. Entschuldigen Sie bitte, was zeichnen Sie hier im Augenblick? The drawing on the board is one of the opening station for the bottomer, that is the shaft with the revolving lever arms for aligning the three-cornered pockets. From these drawings, the machine parts are cast in the foundry. The castings are then stored, and after having properly matured, they are finally processed. Ach so. The first essential for turning out a reliable and convincing job is a really well-equipped and up-to-date workshop and, of course, a loyal and experienced staff of expert engineers. Machine parts are thoroughly tested for accuracy within fine limits with the aid of the latest precision instruments, which is the only way to ensure that after assembly, the machine will give satisfactory and trouble-free service.
The same applies likewise to our manufacturing program for printing presses. This is the rotary flexographic printer, type 407, which prints in up to six colors. The inking rollers are already running to prevent separation of the pigment from the solvent in the ducts. If the machine is now started, the stereo cylinders will automatically descend onto the inking rollers and onto the simultaneously starting paper web. After leaving the reel, the paper web passes three adjustable jaw rollers, which produce the necessary tension. Subsequently, after passing three further jaw rollers, the paper web reaches the first inking unit. Having been applied to the web, the ink is thoroughly dried between the inking units, and again after passing the last inking unit by an infrared dryer and air fan. If desired, other means of drying the ink can be made available by fitting heating plates using gas or steam. The vapor caused by the drying process is drawn off by suction. Afterwards, the paper web once again travels through three adjustable loop draw rollers to control the tension and is then rewound. The machine is, of course, equipped with a semi-automatic reel change device. Depending on the print and type of paper, this machine is capable of producing up to 1,000 feet per minute. machines, these gears here used to be exposed. Now they are contained in a totally enclosed casing, which has the advantage that they can now run in an oil bar, or they can run in an oil shower from above, operated by a pump. This design guarantees smooth running of the machine at high speeds and reduces gear wear to a minimum. setting device enables rapid changeover of stereo cylinders. The continuous efforts for economies in the consumer goods industries have created an ever-growing demand for prepackaged goods. This in turn has inevitably raised the printing standards expected of the finished package as this must act as an advertisement for the goods it contains. These demands are fully met by the Gravure printing machine 444. The variety of ink graduation and the depths of the various colors obtained on this machine result in a particularly effective print. The drying process here is affected by a circulating airstream and a heating drum with automatic thermostatic control of temperature. To ensure accurate register at all times, the machine is equipped with electric eye control, ensuring faultless operation of the complete printing process, and which will automatically make the necessary adjustments through a differential gear. The paper web is printed across the full width, but can be split into several narrower rolls if so desired. The machine shown here is a six-color gravure printer, and may be supplied for any other number of printing units required. All these machines are running to the complete satisfaction of their users in Germany, as well as in many European and overseas countries. Almost 90% of our production is sold abroad, backed by a worldwide sales organization, and it is therefore no idle claim to say that Gottermann and Holman machines are known throughout the world. <laughs>